Now, as we look around the game table, um, I just want to take a moment to cover a couple of ideas, a couple of uh, 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 statements about doing things. Um, like, for instance, um, as you see here, where's my stick? My stick, my stick, my stick, my stick is better than bacon. Um, okay, so this is the layout from the previous game. Uh, and it, we concluded the testing, and we were satisfied with the fact that the, the game can definitely be played without a roster uh, paper, for instance. We know the data sheets uh, are needed. Um, you got to have the data sheets, and but for us, you know, we converted all these data sheets into four by six index cards, so there's no longer a large uh, piece of paper to hold. And um, we did this, oh, I don't know, about five years ago, six years ago. And um, this is the only, this is the data sheet for each vehicle or mech. Actually, for this one, it's just the mech. And it happens to be the Jenner, which we used last game. And, of course, there's a rule summary on it and all the other things that you need to have to, you need to know. To, to operate the vehicle on the game table. Um, but because this isn't really needed anymore, and by the way, this isn't a hard plastic uh, envelope, if you will, uh, for four by six photos. And this is, uh, the intention here was for dry erase, or I should say wet erase, because dry erase is too easy to remove. So wet erase markers are suggested and fine tip at that. Uh, but anyway, so this is the card for every vehicle, but you're really hoping that we don't really need this anymore. And uh, the reason being that the hit locations are all now either uh, a leg, uh, an arm, or a torso. And the, uh, the legs we have just adjudicated, we have just legislated, that the legs are the least likely thing to be hit. Why? Because they're moving, usually, and they're thin. And the most likely thing to be hit is the torso. So uh, when we determine that it's better to use the CNC dice instead of the D6, I should say a normal D6, 1 through 6 facings, using our CNC dice, uh, color, code, and CNC, which is that stim the symbol, the star, uh, which could be anything, by the way, just to remind you, it could be anything. But the fact is, there's three red, fa uh, two red faces. Actually, no. Say it again. There's three red faces. One of them is the C and C symbol, uh, code and color symbol. And for that, we just use a star. You can use anything. You can just use a question mark. But the fact is, we use a star. Uh, and then there's three blue faces. So essentially, the dice is a 50-50. Uh, so just like a D6, one through three or four through six is 50-50, depending on how you want to call it. Um, so here it's the same, red or blue, 50-50, but the three red faces are uh, color. And uh, for hit location, um, the three red faces are uh, torso. Uh, the two red faces are arms, and the one red face with the star is legs. And that's it, I mean, for hit location. Now, why is there another symbol on the dice, uh, on the CNC cube? Because that is a special hit indicator. So, uh, if you roll uh, for hit location, and that special thing uh, indicator came up, it means that something um, unusual or special has occurred. It's a 1 in 6 chance uh, that something unusual has occurred. However, uh, the way this uh, game is working, uh, you really can't get any system management hits until after um, a certain degree of damage has been caused to every mech. And for light mechs, I think it, we had said it was two. Then you can be eligible for system hits uh, for very light mechs, and light mechs is two. 
uh, for medium X is 3, heavy mix 4, and a, a very heavy or assault mix 5. So you have to take 5 hits before a system management hit is possible. So just so you know, I mean, that we had to say that to make that, to make that clear. Um, so uh, before I forget, I wanted to also demonstrate when we talk about the, um, when we talk about the cards, this is a card holder that we, portions of which we 3D printed. And it can sit up, and you can hold all your cards just like that. And that's very convenient. Um, but it's basically a little larger than a 4x6, because these 4x6 uh, hard plastic um, envelopes are a little bit larger, so we had to make this a little bit bigger. And, uh, yeah, it was made at spur of the moment. It's not, a, not a, something you can buy off the shelf but when you can take any piece of cardboard and or foam core even and fold it up and glue it with a hot glue um, gl a hot glue gun then you can create a lot of things that will hold stuff and this is a good example holding these cards is very helpful Um, this is what we were, in, a, in the previous videos, we were talking about. These are the hexagon shaped, and again, they don't have to be. We just decided that we would get them hexagon uh, laser cut, and we would put our graphics on them. These are the hexagon status markers. Uh, on the top of every one of these status markers, you can see we have, um, uh, um, I guess, radar blips is what they would be called in, in Battletech. So the idea here is that it's a sensor reading that tells you in your vehicle that there's something out there. And that is the idea. Uh, that's weird. Excuse me, I just realized something and I don't know. I don't know why. Oh. Now look at that. Okay. Uh, all the tech people out there uh, in the universe. Uh, here is an interesting uh, nuance. In uh, looking at the uh, phone app for the camera and engaging the Wi-Fi on the camera, uh, which is how I'm viewing the app on the phone, because it's Wi-Fi. Um, I've connected to the app, and so on. Uh, the image that's presented in the camera itself is not live. It's as if the app has taken over the live view of the camera. So that's very interesting. So I thought for a minute that I wasn't recording, or it was incorrectly recording, and uh, how do you like that? Okay, so, good, we're still going, I suppose. I just thought I'd kind of bring that up to anybody who's interested. Uh, very interesting. Okay, so, these are the radar blip indicators. Underneath these uh, are the status indicators we were talking about. Um, so, these are interesting. Um, we made these quickly. Why? Why did we make these? Because we realized, uh, whereas in Hex Command Mechanize or Hex Command Gunpowder and Ancients, uh, even even hex command oceans, um, there might be situations where you can't tell what something is, but you know what it is. Like you can't tell exactly what it is, um, but you know it's there. Uh, somebody has told you, or you got a. Uh, it's just out of visual identification, but you can see the thing. It's just you can't tell what exactly. In other words, if it was a hex command oceans, you'd say, okay, it's a ship, and you just can't tell how many sails or what kind of class it is or what kind of a rated ship it is, you just can't tell. Okay, so that's like, it's, that's what one of these is for. So in, in this future era, your radar is telling you something, your sensors have told you something, and that's what these are put down on the game table. Instead of seeing it on the game table, in other words, they're representative markers, Terry. <laughs> these are representative markers, but they're radar blips. You put them out there when you want the, or when the opponent uh, uh, should be told of something, uh, but he doesn't know what it is. In other words, so there's several categories. There's a building, uh, there's infantry squad, I don't know how you would determine infantry, but let's just say they have the tech to do that. 
So you can tell if it's an infantry squad, you just can't tell anything more than that. And uh, a mech itself. So there could be a mech there, a facility, oh, I'm sorry, there's actually four. So there's a facility, there's a mech, um, there's uh, infantry, and uh, there's a facility building, uh, and a tank, a uh, ground vehicle. So that's what these are for. And we could put that out there. So we wouldn't have to show anything until the opponent gets close enough, or until, well, I mean, just like the visual sight range and hex command gunpowder and such, um, this would, what would be, happen is that the, uh, the, uh, the object would be confirmed. Okay, so let's say there's a 12 or a 20 hex. Well, that's pretty far, but okay, say it's, uh, split the difference, uh, 15 hex range. Uh, then the object becomes um, known. Uh, of course, infantry might not. Infantry, you may not be able to identify infantry until you're practically on them. Uh, but that's the idea here. And the reason that they're numbered uh, is so that the owner of that chip can make a record as to what the actual item is. So that's the intention for these things. And of course here, like, we have this massive facility. Well, it could be a whole series of buildings and town or whatever. But we put that out there just to show it. So what are the facility markers for? Well, the facility could be a tower, a gun tower. It could be uh, a small out, uh, building. Anything other than a massive structure like this, it would be fair to, to not show it on the game table. Uh, like, we still have our uh, Star Wars gun turrets out from the previous game. So that's one example. We could put that out here somewhere, put this facility marker out there, and that's what it would be. And the number, of course, I'd, uh, the player would record um, what the item is. Okay, so, so you see, yes, we see, yes, we try to see, we don't always see, sometimes we do. Um, excuse me, I must, because it is that time of year, clear the vocal cord and Okay, that's better. Uh, I'm just going to check my recording. I think it's working. How's it going? Hey, how's it going? Alright. Um, so. Now. So what was the intention here? Just to demonstrate those things. Just to cover those topics. Um, now, if you remember, well, you can see them. They're still out there. The ridges. Now, these ridges uh, are the foamies special order. Well, sometimes special order. If you can't get it in the stores, these are six millimeter each. And when you put enough of those layers together, uh, they become, you know, one inch. So that's a one inch tall object. And the reason they're uh, contoured like this is to create an artificial slope. Because you really don't want to have, well, it'd be nice to have a foamies one inch thick, but you can't. Uh, at least not that I found yet. Uh, that kind of a PVA foam, I think it's called, it would be difficult to work with. This is a lot easier to cut. And then on the top layer is where you draw the hexagon grid. So these could be removed, you see. I'm going to do that because I'm going to show you. Uh, some of the hills we rarely use because they don't really fit historical games, but in this era, uh, they might. Well, no, I mean, it's not that they might, they will. Because they are the off-the-shelf Thick, two inch thick 
um, styrofoam. And I've already got grids on them. And I did these quite a while ago. So here you get an example. These are very large ridges. <coughs> so the intention here would be a very deep cut. Uh, let's take this knob tail away. That was the old style of piling up the uh, hexagon or the uh, PV uh, the six millimeter. Um, now, uh, I want to show you something because this is an important item as well. Uh, you can't just, here, I'll just put it down. Okay? Now, what I'm going to demonstrate here is the fact that when you do things like this, first of all, this is a 4 by 3 game table. It's very small. This would have to be, this should be done on a larger table because Battletech requires, and especially the scale, which is 10 millimeter, uh, this scale requires a bigger table. But because we have a small table, cast game, huge impact, not too much time wasted at all, uh, and, and immediate results. It's like very combat, it's a very small combat area. It's like the actual action zone. This would be like the hornet's nest at Shiloh. That's what this would represent. Just a small, very small portion of the overall battle, but that's exactly what is happening here. But what I'm saying is when you put these things down, immediately what does that do to change the scenery? Or what does it do to change the whole philosophy of the game table? Like if I put this down here, okay, same, same. Look how different it is when you have these massive cuts in this 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 valley. That, you know, it's like Scotland or something, uh, or Norway. These huge uh, protruding uh, elevations it completely changes the dynamic of the game. I mean, look at this was the objective, and these hills were here. Um, look at that, right? And that's ridiculous impact uh, on the. Let's change this, for instance. Uh, the overall scheme of things. I mean, it just—it's incredible. You look at it and you go, "Oh, whoa, that's just." A huge difference. So let's do it like this. Why? So, and here's the other thing too. You see how this has become dead space? What's going to happen here? Is nothing going to happen here? Is everything going to happen there? Well, if you don't want everything to happen in the middle of the game table, because everything obviously does in the table is small, it's going to all happen in the middle. No. Let's try and shift it. One end or a side. Let's you know shift the situation. Forget about what the roads and rivers are right now. Let's just look at the the elevations on the trees, for instance. Uh, we can pick up the trees. We'll pick up the roads later. But right now, let's just think about these. This breaking up of the middle area, and then another thing is, if you didn't break up the middle area. I mean, this is what I mean. When you put it down, you go, oh, uh, okay, huge impact. And then, for instance, I could get those smaller hairs I started off talking about um, and put them down to cover this little area in here. So imagine, look at that causeway. Look at that valley between if I had put hills here. I mean, that's just a massive difference. Uh, it's a hill kill zone. It's equivalent to you know the the uh, the uh, valley of the of the Death Star when when all the X-wing fighters and such are flying down. I mean, if I just put that right there, put another elevation there. Whoa, right? As a matter of fact, I'll demonstrate that. I'll get that little. I'll get those uh, other elevations and show you. So here's another aspect of it. What I wanted to demonstrate was the fact that you've got the scene started here. Okay, you got the scene started with the bridge, the river, the roads, and then there's this piece of land right there. 
And you think, hmm, nothing can be done. Well, if you put a tree there, now it has something. Uh, it, it's less open and <coughs> it looks more congested or there could be, this could be the place to put something like an anti-tank gun or whatever. Uh, and now, so that has one aspect of it. Bring it to another level, and I guess our topic for today is actually putting down terrain, isn't it? Add another, and look how it changes. Okay, now we're super complicated by adding another one there. And then completely dominate Lake Nutty and make this someplace in Germany completely surrounded by forest. Uh, and what does that mean? It means that anything on that bridge is going to be hard to hit unless you have a certain avenue of attack or uh, point of view. Uh, it's it's pretty much impregnable from that direction, this direction, and so on. You've got to shoot at this way, whatever's on the bridge, or the bridge itself. So that's an example of how you can. I started out with one, added, 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 and eventually now it's like, whoa, that's a huge defensive posture right there. Now let me get those other hills. They're smaller elevations is what they are. And as a matter of fact, before I do that, well, is this one going to work? Not really. It's a little dramatic. I mean, that's way dramatic. That's way too dramatic. Okay, let's do this one here like this. And uh, here also I want to demonstrate or uh, point out the fact that we've got, a, would you call this dead space? Well, if mechs, if it's shallow, and mechs can walk on the ocean or the ground or the, the, the water floor, whatever it is, uh, then this is not dead space. But if they can't walk on this, if there's no floating objects like boats to come in on this, and if there's no things going down the river, like little craft of some kind, gunboats, which actually would not be a bad idea to acquire some of those little tiny gunboats because that's a that's a real thing. Um, maybe micro machines might have little gunboats that we could get in the proper scale. Um, then this becomes uh, worth it if, it if those aspects are there. If they're not, this is dead space. This is the kind of thing where you're forcing uh, you're forcing congestion. If I take this away, huge impact, right? Just imagine as you start, you put the terrain down and then you take it away. Look at the difference. I mean, this, okay, dead. Nothing happening. Nothing can happen unless there's landing craft coming in, which is possible. Could be a landing scenario. But now take it away. Now it's completely open and you can have mechs coming in here. You can move this and have this really be an open space. Anything in there firing this way is totally going to, you know, decimate. So, if we go like this, that would be too much because of the hook that's in this model. That would be a protection zone right there, which is fine, but we kind of like, nah, let's leave it like that because it takes away too much protection for the attacker. Okay, so let's again just ignore the roads for now as I go through this stuff, and we'll take this water away. And we'll leave, well, we can put this guy down. Okay? And let's go to our little new box of small elevations and show how, even though they're small, they can have some meaning. They're a different shape, but they're flocked on top. Okay? So they've got some flocking. Now, these guys could have flocking as well, just to make it consistent. Uh, and but there's no hex here on drawn on it because these are too small. This is pretty much a whole hex, uh, but this one here doesn't. So what do you do? Well, just call it a hex. It's surrounded by. Would that be a hex and a hex and a hex? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose you could say that's one, two, and three. Okay, and uh, this would be one and two maybe. Right. 
but here's another example. This guy's a little shorter, right? A little shorter guy. So let's leave him out. He's a little bit different. Let's put this guy in here. Actually, let's turn this to get the curve. There you go. And put this guy right here like this. Huge. Completely different impact than what we started with. I mean, look at how do you move in this. Look at the mech here, for instance. Again, forget about the visual displacement, time, time space, and so on displacement. Uh, I mean, look at Here's no way to get around it. You go through it or you don't. You get on top of it. And here's the other topic that we might discuss too is how does a mech like this size get on top of that hill? You know, you have to kind of talk about it and decide before the game. Can he walk up? Can these uh, huge elevations be navigated walking up? Don't know. You can jump up, sure. Can you walk up? I don't know. You could just legislate it and say, sure. Just ignore the fact that it has no slopes. And just in other words, you go from here, okay, I'm walking up minus two or something. That way, you, you leave it open and players don't have a problem maneuvering. Okay, so again, let's put these guys back here, get them out of the way. And as you can see now, the weights could be a lot different. We have a lot of medium and light mechs out here. Maybe this is an assault situation. And uh, we may have to change uh, our, you know, we may have to add different mechs, more mechs, uh, stuff like that. So anyway, there we are. That's the first uh, episode of this new series, Placing Terrain and uh, the Dramatic Changes that it can make.